Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Long-Term Care Coffee Break with One America. There is my friend and colleague, Kevin Fisher, with his coffee cup. <laughs> I see he's already had plenty to drink. My name is Michael <laughs> Florio. We are regional sales directors with One America on the long-term care side, obviously. Happy to bring this to you. We do it every week, Tuesday, 10 a.m. Eastern, and again, 10 a.m. Pacific. So, uh, you know, glad you could tune in, spend this quarter of an hour with us. At the end, there'll be some feedback. We welcome uh, you to... Uh, you know, consider that and, uh, you know, just tell us what you think, what you like, and if there's anyone in particular you would like to uh, to hear from. Kev, I, I believe that we got some feedback uh, from one of the early sessions, the very early, I believe it was the second session with Roz Montgomery, our marketing guru, who was talking about how to set up campaigns and whatnot. Can you uh, tell our listeners a little bit about that? Sure thing. Uh, this is a direct byproduct of that, uh, of that uh, broadcast. And uh, the question is pretty simple. I want to run a consumer uh, seminar uh, or campaign, actually. Um, how do I get started? Pretty simple. Grab the phone, shoot an email, speak to Michael and me. We'll figure out what, you, uh, what you're looking for. And then we'll, we'll, we'll bring in Roz to more thoroughly um, consider all options that are available. We've got, we've got quite a bit of stuff from both social media, print media. Uh, emails and all that. So please get in touch with us first. Uh, one other thing I'd like to mention is that coming up on June 23rd at 3 p.m., Michael and I will be uh, presenting our Great Retirement Income Gap consumer uh, presentation. So you are invited to please join us so that you can see uh, firsthand what that, cons that consumer presentation is all about. And I think it'll be beneficial to you. Uh, last thing is I wanna segue into our, uh, our guest, which is Justin Fox. Justin is my internal. Uh, he's been with me well, for the last few years. He's instrumental uh, in keeping things moving uh, from a sales perspective for us. Just like Jen Wagner, uh, he uh, experiences both inbound uh, activity and is very proactive in making stuff happen. Uh, but uh, we recorded this a couple weeks ago, and we thought that um, given the relevance of, of the conversation uh, around most common questions that they, they receive, uh, we'd share it with you today. The layup question, tell us about the pre-screening of clients. Uh, you know, I know those are big, chunkier calls. Uh, can you tell me how those calls generally progress? Yeah, uh, sure. Usually when we receive those calls internally, uh, the first thing we advise them is we're not underwriting, so we can't give them the official response, but we always advise them that, hey, we do have a process guide that gives a good layout for both sides of the, of the spectrum, whether it's asset care or annuity care. And then we all, always, always preface and tell them, please reach out directly to the underwriting department. The reason why that's important is because if we have to do it for, the, uh, for them, the, they have to wait for us to get the response, and then we have to get the response back to them versus being able to have that direct interaction with the underwriting department in case they have any follow-up questions, which they can email them at the CSPUI at oneamerica.com with an uh, email address. And the beauty about that is it's a direct connection directly to the underwriting department. And usually there's a response within an hour. So it's not a, you know, one or two day process. It's a quick response. And as I always put it, as I say, why wouldn't you want to give your client the best expectation going into the process? So this helps set the expectation because underwriting will give them a good look at how they're going to view the client when they apply. One other thing as it relates to that um, pre-underwriting component is when, when it does come uh, time for an application, uh, attaching or submitting that pre-underwriting inquiry with the app helps along the way. Uh, yes. How often does that happen? It doesn't happen very often. A lot of times people forget, and that's part of it as well, because they may get it done, and then maybe it takes a month or two before the client really makes a decision. 
it's very important if they go ahead and attack that underwriting notes, hey, we've already looked and kind of reviewed this client already. That helps speed up the process as well for the client. So that can reduce that time it takes between submitting the application and getting the policy issued. That's good advice. I think uh, I think more people should be, should actually be paying attention to what you've told them as it relates to that. Uh, and, and, you know, and if we can take a week out of, out of cycle time, you know, that, that improves everything along the way. It does. It improves the client experience, you know, because clients get anxious, you know, when they go through this process. So this kind of helps put them at ease because going into it, when they already apply, they have an idea of, hey, when America already said, okay, I could potentially get rated or, hey, right now they can look at me as a preferred client, which is great. But we have to be able to set that expectation for a client and just improve the experience for them. So, Justin, I've got a question for you, too. Um, and I know you guys run a lot of illustrations on the desk, and you do a great job with that. And I encourage people to contact my internal, Jen, when they're first starting off, just so that we know that they're getting really the best that One America can offer, because we have a lot of opportunities to provide insurance. But I know some people also at the agency and producer level like to run their own quotes. Do you get questions about that? And how can they do that? Yes, we do. We get, uh, surprisingly, some people don't know that they actually have access to do that, whether they're appointed or not. So if they're not appointed, we always direct them to our calculator link, which is the oneamerica.com forward slash forward slash care solutions calculator forward slash index uh, dot HTML. <laughs> so it's a long one. Usually I just tell people, let me send you the link. It's a lot easier than trying to type all that into your browser. Um, but for non-appointed agents, they can go in that way. The good thing about that is, as well, is once they do it on the calculator, they also can submit an e-application through that as well. So I won't jump into that whole process, but it's actually pretty simple. Once you go in, you'll see all the information that you can put in for the illustration that you're looking to run. And then there's actually towards the top right where it gives you the option to go ahead and submit an e-application as well. Um, now, if you're an appointed agent, you can log into the OLS.OneAmerica.com website. And then you have to click on the blue hyperlink that's towards the middle of the screen that says check out the mobile friendly resource online. And then that takes you to really where the agents, what they want to see. They can see the business. They can see the applications. Uh, and then you'll see where it says sales connection. And that's where the software is to run the illustration. And the same goes there. Once you go in there, you can start a new case. If it's something that you have already been working on, they can view cases that they previously worked on, and they can also go in and submit e-applications that way as well. So it's a beautiful thing. I always urge them and hopefully kind of nudge uh, agents to go ahead and get that first piece of business in because once they do that, they get that producer code. And with the producer code, it comes the ability to save e-applications, save illustrations, versus having to go in and redo them, you know, recreate them each time using the calculator when you're not appointed yet. How often do you get asked, what does the AOB or the COB mean illustratively and how does that work? You know, it's, uh, you get a lot of acronyms and uh, abbreviations rolling around. Uh, most people, if you don't well, do a lot with us, don't have a clue. How often exactly. do you get that? Uh, well, I always tell them, we like to confuse them a little bit, and then it, it gets them to call <laughs> us with questions. <laughs> so at least we get that conversation. But we get that a lot because it's, uh, like you said, it's a new acronym that is being used. The COB is something that we've always used, but AOB now versus where before we just used to say the base policy. And that's all AOB is. It's the acceleration of benefits. So it's referring to how quickly we're going to pay out that death benefit. So uh, the AOB is the base policy. So it's the 25 month, the 33 month, or the 50 month base policy that you see on our illustrations. And then the COB is that continuation of benefits rider, which that is exactly what it says. It's that continuation of benefits once your AOB has been spent. So once you deplete the base policy, the COB kicks in the continuation of benefits rider. So COB is continuation of benefits. AOB is the acceleration of benefits. And we get that a lot. And, and, and I tell people, don't be, uh, don't be embarrassed by it, because if it's nothing that you've ever seen, I understand where the confusion can come in. So, right. Yeah. Thanks, Justin. That's a great explanation. So uh, another thing that uh, I know I get asked a lot is, gee, Michael, who do I call when? And a lot of the people in the field have a great relationship through my accounts with Jen, Jen Wagner. 
but Jen's not the primary contact when it comes to business that's been submitted. So when do people call you and when do they call their case manager? Okay, that's a good question. Um, I kind of try to separate it like this. I say anything pre-sales, you always need to come to your internal. So whether it's product questions, whether it's you know illustration questions, even if it's application questions, uh, please come to us the in, on the internal side. The case manager really comes in once you get it submitted. If you're looking for a status, uh, outstanding requirements, questions pertaining to those things, that's when the case manager gets involved because they're really trying to move that that uh, policy forward for you so we can get it issued. So they're going to be the ones who kind of do the hands-on once it actually gets in-house. But before it actually gets here, majority of the questions in, uh, that the agents may have, they're going to come to the internal desk. And there may be a few situations where, hey, it's not something that we necessarily handle where we still may have to get them to the case manager. But majority of the time, that's something that they can come to us first, and then we can kind of figure it out from there. So one, one thing that kind of segues into that as, um, as it relates to uh, licensing or contracting problems, what, what, where would people be best started, best pointed to to start? You or their case manager or where? Where, does, where do they go? For licensing questions, the best place to go is our licensing department. They are great at doing the licensing aspect of it. Um, a lot of times, though, we'll get the calls and we can, some of the more general questions, we can kind of help gauge and kind of navigate where they need to go, you know, for those. But I always say, if you want confirmation, especially when it comes to, hey, am I licensed? Uh, hey, did I get my training in? Um, did you get my annuity certificate? Uh, did you get my LTC certificate? Those to go directly to the licensing department. And again, it become, it, it's mainly because, kind of going back to the pre-underwriting, then you have that direct connection to that department. In case you have any follow-up questions, you don't have to wait for your internal to get you the question, you to respond to your internal, the internal to get it back to licensing, and then that kind of you know continues to go down. You can have that direct connection. So the best way to contact the licensing department is gonna be through email at licensing dot court fin at one america dot com um, right now just due to the situation that's going on in the world today our licensing department has pretty much no access from a phone standpoint so we are directing them to go strictly by email in which case it's very quick responses because all everyone is jumping in and they're checking the emails as they come in through the licensing department i think that's probably all the questions we have time for today justin although i'd love to you know uh, reserve the right to maybe ask you to come back at some point down the road. We got a lot of the people lined up, but really want to uh, thank you. Wow, well, okay, that was great stuff. Um, I'm glad Justin and his family are well. As you can see, we recorded that uh, deeper when we were all in the, strictly in that shelter in place situation, but I'm glad we held on to that one because those are some good questions. And the three things that really kind of struck home with me is how easy it is at the agency and producer level with that PUI form, which is the pre underwriting inquiry basic information, call Kevin or I or Justin or Jen, we'll get that basic form to you. And I tell people, you know, underwriting will have a response to you on your client and whether or not we can consider, not approve, but consider that situation, that, that application within 24 hours. And honestly, I see it usually in a lot less time, but I say 24 hours. That's the PUI form. Also talked about agencies and producers doing their own quotes. Very simple to set up. And that's a Justin and, and Jen question. Not that Kevin and I don't want to help you, but they're the experts there. Kevin's smiling just like I am. You want to call them on that one. But even if you do that, and I encourage you to do it, I strongly encourage you in the beginning to let Justin and Jen set that up. Because if you get a situation where someone says, just match this, it may not be the best that we can offer. They'll set up what the best situation is for the client. So certainly being able to do your own quotes. And then the case management situation. You know, we've got a sheet. And actually, uh, Kevin's got his own. I've got mine. But, you know, we can get this out to you in electronic format. And it shows, you know, certainly my mate for uh, radio face up on the top here. But over here, I've got uh, my case manager. Kevin's got his own, Drea Diaz. And we can get that out to you along with other relevant information that you're going to want to have on licensing commissions, et cetera. So please get in touch with us from that. But that was about it, Kev. Um, any other information you wanted to review before we kind of closed up today? Yeah, a couple of quick reminders. Uh, remember, on June 23rd at 3 o'clock, uh, Michael and I will be 
uh, presenting the consumer version of the great retirement income gap. Uh, also uh, coming up uh, to set your calendar for, uh, we're gonna have some good conversations. One is specifically around claims uh, with Denise Cochran. Then we'll be speaking to our uh, advanced sales folks about the SECURE Act and using trusts with asset care. And of course, you know, as we've said a couple of times, we have the uh, consumer seminar, virtual consumer seminar that is, uh, on April 23rd at 3 p.m. So with that, I'm gonna throw it back to you, Michael, and bring us on. Uh, okay, well, I'm, uh, I'm just about ready to wrap it up now. Let's keep it at 15 minutes for everyone. Appreciate your time today. I'm gonna to leave you with a thought from someone who had, uh, I would say, a little bit of success in the automotive industry, and it's a, a quote that if my kids could hear me, they'd be laughing now because I told them a million times. And uh, the quote goes like this. Whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you're right. And those <laughs> words were spoken by Ford a very long time ago. So I hope you find something this week that you feel like you can do. Hope you have a great week, and we look forward to uh, having you join us next week. Tuesday, 10 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. Take care, everyone. Have a great week. Coffee's done. I'm out. Kevin's out. We'll see you next week.